Fight it out, 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 out. What's up, family? What's going on? How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Man, well, I want to get into some real deep topics that's real dear to me. We're going to talk about what is a foundational black American, a FBA, and what is not. I know a lot of people think that black is all the same. They like to look at us like one big nigga, but it's not like that. And we are not all the same, we don't all have the same purposes or come from the same background. Now when we talk about a foundation of black American, really we talking about somebody like me who has family who can trace their family back to the 1700s, 1800s and, and be even before. And a non-foundation of black American would be somebody who, oh, 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 excuse me, and also can trace it back to the system of slavery in some type of way. And a non-foundation of black American would be somebody who is not tied to that system of slavery at all and whose parents came over here as immigrants escaping uh, poverty or defeat in their country. Alright, so let's just get that clear. But I want to give some historical value on foundation of black Americans and let you know why um, we call each other foundation of black Americans. And um, yeah, and some history that you might not know. All right. So we're gonna start with Spain. All right. Now a lot of us were taught that the British or or yeah, the British were the first to touch this land and uh, you know start colonizing in a sense. <clears throat> But I think the British got here um, in the 1600s, right? 1640-something, right? But 100 years before that, 100 and plus years before that, Spain was the dominant territory. Now, I, wanna, I want y'all to actually get this book called The Black Seminole Legacy in North America, all right? Because a lot of this information comes from this book and from some other sources. But Spain was the territory. Spain was the, the first to come here and start to colonialize. Now, I'm talking about from a European perspective. Because Spain is considered European. Just like Britain. Alright? And the U.S. Okay? They were considered European countries fighting for colonialism and dominance. So Spain got here first and they were coming up through, you know, Georgia, Texas, Mexico, uh, yeah, all up there, Florida, Florida was tough. It was in the Carolinas, all up through there. They had actually claimed all of North America, you know, as theirs. See, but something happened. They brought these, um, <clears throat> the slaves over here with them so you gotta understand, slavery is a part, of, is, is, is an important part of colonialism. You can't have colonialism in this type of industry without some form of slavery or servitude or slavery that's going on. Okay, so what happens is Spain comes over here and they bring um, some black people with them. All right, and then those black people along with the natives of the land perform a rebellion against um, Spain and that rebellion was called well one of them they performed a number of rebellions excuse me alright but one in particular was um, San Miguel de Guadalupe or Gua Gua Guadalupe excuse me um, that rebellion in 1526 and that sparked <clears throat> they pushed Spain back out all right, so now the natives and the black people, which they've already already been doing now, there's there's there black people have been circumnavigating circumnavigating the globe. All right, way before Spain or Europe. All right, so that's a, that's an important fact to know. So when the black people get to to America, they of course 
they the the Spanish are using the black people as navigators. So obviously we know the land. We end up intermingling with the natives as we have always done, or intermingling with each other, and we, we end up rebelling against Spain. All right. So now we all together still. We now that's the first significant rebellion. We all are one now. Now we all look alike. All right. We all mesh and we all have similar habits because for thousands of years before Spain, Britain, and US, we were already circumnavigating the globe, all right, building relationships with one another. <clears throat> all right. So then the, Brit the British in the United States came in from the north, all right, and traveled down towards the Carolinas. All right. Now this is important because I wanted you to get in, in context and the perspective that they didn't start bringing slaves. Africans, African slavery didn't become as it was popular, but it didn't come, become as popular until the till like later on 1600s, 1700s. At first, it was common to slave the natives. All right, so the natives were being reclassified as slaves. You understand? So that's just how you know that everybody really look alike. Because they would explore these new areas and then give reports and say, oh, the, they look like the maroon people in this people in this area. And they would call us Cimaroons or um, maroon people or whatever. So the slave, the slave system began on the natives. And I was reading this book also called They Were White and They Were Slaves. And uh, by Michael A. Hoffman II, and this guy actually talks about how slavery in Europe was very popular. They would just get kids off the, the streets of Britain, in Britain, and London, because they lived filthy, and they would just put them in it in factories. And at four and five years old, made them drag. Um, carts through coal mines while the 11 year olds banging coal and you didn't really live past 20 back then if you were white because of that system of slavery and then which they imposed when they came here imposing colonialism so with colonialism you have to have slaves you have to have somebody working for you so you're not um, doing the work yourself you understand so and, and that requires if you want to have a lot, a big industry, you have to have a lot of people working for you. So what they would do, they would just kidnap people. They would just take them off the street and make them slaves under the rule of the British crown. So even the natives were considered slaves before the Africans were brought over here as slaves. But then the Africans became, get, get, brought, were brought over here as slaves, all right? So the Africans started intermingling and escaping. Now, I wanted to put it in perspective because Georgia and Florida, Florida in particular, is played an important role in the way we operate as black people today, all right? Because they put up a successful rebellion, all right, against the uh, uh, the United States and Britain, um, and they formed allies, all right. Um, the the blacks, which they they just grouped everybody as black eventually. The blacks, the Seminoles, the the Maroons, they would eventually form an uh, alliance and aid Spain against the United States. You see what I'm saying? So we were in that because the United States were aim was to continue slavery and Spain was letting black people be free if you could make it to Florida. You know, if you can make it to Florida, you would be free. Okay? So you need to realize that it wasn't just it wasn't the uh, just a northern free thing. Uh, you weren't just going to the north to get free. You could in the 15, 1600s, you could go to Spain. 16, maybe up through the up through the 1800s, you could go to Spain and be free. I mean, go to Florida and be free. You understand? So, um, and not just free in the sense of like no in in the sense of no shackles, but you could actually become a part of a a, a sovereign. Uh, a sovereign existence as a um, as as a part of the Seminole tribe. You see what I'm saying? So there were five civilized tribes, what they call civilized tribes. 
All right, and those five civilized tribes, we all know because we all, most of us identify the foundational ones with, with one or another in some way, form, or fashion. One is the uh, Cherokee, the Chicksaw, the Creeks, the Choctaw, and the Seminoles. Now, all of these own slaves, this is what made them civilized. See, they, were, they would participate in the form of colonialism where they would own slaves and let the slaves do the work for them. They, they participated in this. You know, I guess it's a survival, a survival uh, 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 strategy. <clears throat> all right, because you can, you know, you can see what was happening. So, but all of these tribes were owned slaves. These five, they, they call them slip civilized because they were owned slaves, all right? And they would participate in their, this type of system that uh, perpetuated uh, enslavement of people that look like them, or people, or, or black people, all right, or people that weren't a part of their tribe, or people that were, were, in, they were coming from Spain or anywhere, all right. If you were black, they would just take you, all right. But and they had, they, and and they all, except the Seminoles, participated in a, in a way that was European. All right, see, so they would they would participate in slavery, except the Seminoles, according to this book. Um, like the, they all, except the Europe, except the Seminoles, would participate in um, the slavery system, like the Europeans. So the Seminoles, what they would do differently, is what. Um, is what we all should really do. Um, they would see that basically they would buy the or they would let the freed, uh, they would let the people come and escape and come and join their tribe, right? But under the guise of slavery. You understand? So what they would do is they would let this person have an allotment of land, this family or these families have land over here, and, the, and they would pay them a small percentage of the crops. All right, and they will be in communication with them, not as slaves, but as a unified um, militia. And these people would um, eventually be a moving force and a changing force in um, in the battle for Florida and um, the battle against uh, slavery as we knew it then and how it shaped how we live today. So, foundation of black Americans have a key part in those um, wars. See, there were a few wars that I didn't cover. Um, I did cover the, uh, I did talk about briefly the San Miguel, the um, Guadalupe. There was also the New York Slave Rebellion. You can look up this on officialfba.com. And um, you will, you, this is where I get these, war, uh, these nine significant rebellions from. Um, the Chesapeake Rebellion of 1730, the Storo Rebellion of 1739, um, Gabrielle Prosser Rebellion of 1800, and uh, German Coast Uprising 1811, and uh, Denmark Versailles Rebellion uh, 1822. Of course, we all know of the Nat Turner Rebellion. Of 1831, and we all know what they did to that brother, um, and also the Black Seminole Maroon Wars, which from 1693 to 1845, really. All right, because when we got here, now not when we got here, we were here. So, and then after after they did that treaty with Spain or whatever to to um, to to get Florida, what they would do is put white supremacist uh, people in positions to control the senses, to reclassify people, all right? And they would just basically erase our tribes, you understand? And then um, reclassify us as black or African-American, you see? So, that's what I really wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk about what is a foundation of black American and what is not a foundation of black American. So I don't want y'all to get it twisted. When y'all see, like y'all will see people disrespecting black women, 
uh, blacks uh, like a lot you see black men on in, in, on the internet disrespecting black women or black women or you'll see black women blatantly um, talking down on the culture of other black women and if you just check these people resumes you will see that they not foundational black Americans foundation of black Americans for the most part understand the struggle of other foundational black Americans and we don't and we understand our culture and we don't perpetuate it, and we don't talk down on our culture for the most part now we might have some stigmas that we don't like but we know each other and we know what it's not a foundation of black America. But at these times, these days, it can get a little confusing. So just make sure you're checking these folks back around, seeing where they're from. I know I can trace my my grand my my granddad was born in 1918. And his granddad, his I mean his dad is traced back to the 1800s. <clears throat> Alright, we've from Oglethorpe down deep south in the bush, where people still not down there yet. You see what I'm saying? We, that's what we, we, and that's how we were able to maintain our land and our, our time. My, my granddad, foundational Black American. My grandma, foundational Black American on my father's side. My grandma is Native American. She is Native to the land. She has land that was passed down through her, her, her through, through, through uh, the women in her side of it. All right, my granddad did have to fight off and almost was almost killed by white people for getting his kids in school to be taught and, and having as much wealth as he did um, as a single individual as you know what you could call wealthy at that time all right he was able to do things that uh, that they couldn't do and they hated him and they tried to kill him they almost killed him really they stabbed him but he fought him off block stabbed and survived you understand so we have a different um background now if, if your parents didn't come over here didn't have to they just came over here fleeing from another country y'all and i know some of my friends might hate me but if that happened then you're not foundational black american you can you your bank you can anchor here and you can begin your foundational black american lineage here and you also um um people who don't classify themselves as black but as some other um race um, are entitled to benefits that they receive that foundational black Americans do not receive. Um, people come over here all the time it's with our same skin color but they own all the stores. You don't see one foundation. You, you see foundational black Americans we own the barbershops, we own the, the hair salons. Yeah we own that. You know what I'm saying? We might have a slave V but we need to have an area that's for us and we need to be giving back. And um in a major way because I mean they got us out here in a, in a messed up position they got us fucked up turned around for real so um, I don't want y'all to get it twisted man I'm here for y'all I'm here for all the foundational black Americans I just want to give y'all some knowledge just to let y'all know that the Britain, British and the US was not the first people here to, to try to enslave us and turn us to slaves alright the Spanish did it first alright but we beat them Right, and we always fought, just like we still fighting up and throughout the ages. Y'all know through the 1800s, through the 1900s, with the movements of Marcus Garvey, with the movements of Malcolm X, with the movements <coughs> of um, the Black Panther Party, with the movements of the MOVE organization, with the movements in Tulsa, Oklahoma, you know, and all the other um, um, Black Wall Streets around the world, and what they did to us with the highways and destroying our businesses. Y'all know what a foundation of black American is. All right? So, if y'all not a part of that, please, if y'all don't wanna, just stay out of it. If y'all don't wanna be a part of it, don't talk down on us, we have our own struggle. But if you're not a foundation of black American, you wanna be a part of this struggle, then we do invite you in because we all want to work together. All right, but I'm gonna keep on dropping these facts on y'all, man. I love y'all, y'all have a good night, peace.